Fry, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I created this uh, giraffe piece using primarily seed beads uh, for the entire piece. We're going to go through the whole process today, so I hope you enjoy. Whenever I start a new piece, I begin by prepping the surface, and this piece was created on an upcycled cabinet door. So what I did was I sanded the inside panel and I prepared it with primer and then I drew my pattern on there that I was going to follow. And what I'm doing here is using a glue gun, it's called an air pen, to place the glue where I want it and then I'm using pre-strung beads right on top of my glue lines. And I do pull the string out of the beads. It makes it easier to manage um, the future beads that need to be laid down because it gives you longer strings and it also doesn't snag on anything and also um, the string can change the color of the beads depending on the type of bead you're using. Now all I'm doing is tracing the lines that I have down existing. Now when you start to get up to this top area as you can see some of the pieces are really small and uh, the areas get really small. So you kind of have to improvise. Um, here I'm using the tweezers to help me, to help guide me and help place the beads where they need to be. And then in these little bitty areas, I'm just going to put some beads in there. I'm not going to try to make them round and complicate things. Uh, a lot of times you just need to modify as you go and see what works and what doesn't work. So here I'm just using the tweezers to place beads. I am using Aileen's Craft Glue here. It's not super runny, but it does stick really, really well, and it also dries very clear. Um, when you do this method, you have to be careful that you don't knock beads off when they're dry, and you also have to make sure that they are completely dry before you go on to any other steps. So um, this process takes quite a while, uh, laying all the lines down, but once you do lay the lines down, it's easier um, in the future to just fill them in. Now here for the mother giraffe, I did use paint in the background, and one of the reasons I did that is because I want the spots to be different. Uh, giraffes, as everybody knows, are born in one color and then they grow into another color as they get older. So here I used paint in the background to help change the color of the beads, make them a little bit more intense, a little bit darker. And I also used different beads. You can tell that I'm using some different beads in this area. So what I need to do now is create an outside border uh, to corral all the beads. So now that the spots are dry, and these, um, I need to fill in the outside area, so that I have a clean place to put beads inside. And um, one of the reasons that my pieces take weeks sometimes to create is that there's a lot of drying time in between. When you start setting these beads, um, if you try to work too much and put lay too much down at one time, you'll knock beads out of place. And, um, and it's accidental, it happened to me many, many times. I've kind of learned my lesson and I set small sections at a time, then I'll wait overnight and that way they're secure and if I run my hand over them, I'm not knocking anything out of place. Um, here I'm going to set some hairs and I'm doing that with bugle beads, just getting some different lengths of bugle beads and it gives me a little bit of flexibility and I'm just seeing what feels right, um, not really following anything too specific. I do need to give them eyes. I like to give them eyes early on so that they can watch me and it kind of gives me that sense that I'm uh, somebody's keeping an eye on me. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm filling in the spots and really all I do here is pour some beads into the area and fill them in. And as you can see there's a lot of tweezer work with this because I want to make sure that there are as many beads as possible but not too many in each area. If the beads are stacked on top of each other, it will look sloppy when it's done, and it will also cause the beads to gather together. So you want to make sure that everything is very flat and it's even, it's a single layer, um, and you will have gaps, but you can minimize them by doing a really good job with the tweezers before you pour the glue into place. 
So here I am setting as many beads as I possibly can, but I'm not going to do too much. I'm going to do these. Again, you can see they're kind of small sections. Some beads, you know, you can pat into place with your hand and other beads you need to kind of get in there. These little scoopers that you see me using, the pink ones, are great. Um, they just kind of fit right and um, allow me to just kind of pour the beads into place in small sections. And I use them like a little shovel and then my finger just kind of pushes them off. Um, so the tools of the trade definitely make a difference um, in making your life easier. Now that the spots are all filled in, I'm starting to work on the other areas. And these are a little less defined. As you can see, I'm kind of blending two colors together, various shades of white, various shades of brown. This is more freehand. This is where the painting kind of comes into play. And I like to uh, blend colors in together so that it looks like they fade. As you can see, there are some open areas where I've poured some kind of miscellaneous brown beads. And I'm adding other colors and other shades into that, placing them with the tweezers and making sure that they're exactly where I want them to be, that they look random, uh, but they aren't always necessarily completely random. I have a great deal of control over that. Here I'm mixing in various shades of browns to get the darkness of the mouth and to create some of those shadows. Here I'm going to begin to pour some glue in, and the glue that I use is Aileen's Craft Glue, but this is a mixture that is 85% water and only 15% glue. The reason that that's important is because you want the glue to sink down below the bead. That way it doesn't leave a residue of glue on the top, but it will support and glue the bead only on the bottom. Now that the giraffes are done, I want to add some grass. And what I've done is selected several different shades of green to do this. What I'm doing here is picking the green bugle bead out and I'm dipping it in a watered down glue mixture. Now this mixture is 50% water, 50% glue. The reason this is different than the other is because it doesn't need to be quite as runny. I don't really want to use solid glue because um, it doesn't dry as evenly and is clear. I don't want any clumps in there. Also, this wet glue mixture allows me the time to play with the beads and uh, work them into the right place. Sometimes I have to make changes um, because I'm doing this kind of on the fly and as I go, I'm, I'm making it up as I go. So in order to give myself time to play with it, I make sure that I use the wet glue mixture because it gives me time to move beads around and make sure they're exactly where I want them before uh, they set. Um, there is no problem with the glue um, here. You want to make sure that when you're done with the entire piece that it does get sprayed. Uh, what I will do is um, when, the, when the entire piece is done, I will spray it with an acrylic glaze and that kind of seals everything in. Another thing about this technique, and you'll notice on the final piece that this um, empty white space is filled in with the blue, is that the beads hold each other together. When you have beads floating around by themselves, they're harder to hold in, into place and they tend to want to fall out. So by filling the entire thing with beads, you're making the piece stronger, um, allowing a little bit more interaction. I like to have my customers touch the work and know that it's not as delicate as it looks. And so um, you'll see the piece all filled in. And that's one another reason why I do it that way. Thank you so much for watching A Single Touch, for watching me make this creation um, and this very special piece. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and I hope you'll take a look at my YouTube channel, the Sabrina Fry Art Channel, because it has a lot of videos with great detail on them. And I will continue to post other videos and tutorials on this channel, the Bead Mosaic channel, so that you can follow along and maybe learn something. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me um, and send me a message. I, I love interacting with people and I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. I hope you've enjoyed.